Okay. Mm. All right. So the feedback that I've gotten is that y'all do enjoy it when I actually cover articles, right? So let's continue with the ongoing Irvine saga, shall we? I just had my leafy greens after my physical therapy appointment. So I'm going to light up a cigarette. <laughs> because I do have my vices, and uh, go ahead and cover this. All right, Irvine voters on track to reject Lincoln Club-backed candidates. How did this uh, come to my attention? I saw it shared by both um, mayoral candidate Brenda Lynn and um, uh, city council candidate Dr. Kathleen Treceder. Treceder did win. Um, Brenda, we were not able to get in. Um, Farrah Khan retained, she, she was reelected as incumbent. Okay. Um, all right. So this was published six hours ago. A voter fills out a ballot. Okay. That's just a, like a stock image picture, whatever. Irvine elections were some of the tightest city races in Orange County this year. But just over a week after election night, voters are on track to create a Democratic supermajority on their city council. It should have been anyway, which is pretty surprising. Like Irvine is, a, for the most part, a blue city. And so it's surprising that any Dem um, Republicans could get in to begin with, being quite frank. Councilman Larry Agrin and UC Irvine Professor Kathleen Treceder are poised to win both the open city council seats, while Mayor Farrah Khan will keep the mayor's office for the next two years, leading a complete shutout of Republican candidates in the city. If the trend holds, Councilman Mike Carroll will be the lone Republican on the council. And honestly, he shouldn't be there to begin with. And you can thank Farrah Khan for helping that appointment along. Councilman Anthony Quo is currently losing his re-election bid, falling just nearly 2,000 votes short uh, as of Thursday to return for a second term on the council. John Park, chair of the city's finance commission, who was also endorsed by the Republican Party, is in fourth place over 2,000 votes behind Quo. Wow. They did not go to districting, if I remember correctly, because Tammy Kim put a squash on that, right? And I think Farrah was involved in that, too. Um, but we were trying to get Irvine districted. Well, Farrah and Tammy, you better freaking change your tune pretty soon here and start doing a better job for Irvine, because... Um, you're certainly not representing democratic values by uh, aligning with the Republicans and, and doing their bidding. Most of the big spending in the campaign ended up going to losing candidates. Okay. Together, Quo and Park received over $300,000 in supportive advertising from the Lincoln Club, one of Orange County's largest conservative donation groups, making them the candidates with the most financial backing in the race. Democrats have edged out Republicans in voter registration over the years and helped first elect Repu um, not Repub. Every time I see REP, I think Republican, but it's representative. Representative Katie Porter in 2018, who's become a national star for the Democratic Party since then. Right now, Democrats make up over 41% of the city's registered voters compared to Republicans, 24%. No party voters have a larger share of the vote than Republicans, holding just under 30% of the total registered voters. By the way, what's interesting to note about that statistic, I mean, that's just like Irvine, right? But in the state of California, Republicans are currently a third party. No party preference voters outnumber them. So the two highest demographics in California currently are Democrats 
and no party preference voters. Republicans are technically a third party in California. Mike Mudian, a professor of political science at Chapman University, said the city's growing Democratic population is a sign of how politically diverse Orange County has become. Back in the 90s, this was such a Republican-dominated solid red county, and that was reflected at the local government, Mudian said in a phone interview. Now, four to one, I think there are many who would not have predicted that because there's a strong Republican faction in Irvine, and it's indiv- indicative of a changing Orange County. Well, the thing is, um, that is an Orange County statistic. Um, and mainly when you look at like, where do the Republicans live? They live in the hills, right? They live in the hills for the most part. Like they're, they're in San Clemente, they're in Cota de Casa, they're in uh, San Juan Capistrano, they're on the coastline a bit, not, not Laguna Beach so much, but in some parts of Laguna too. Newport Beach, um, your Belinda, you know, they're, they're in the hills. They're hill people. Let's be real. They're hill people. But that's why we've been able to make so much progress and um, flip the county blue. Because we, we did get um, plurality. We didn't get majority. We got plurality, right? The biggest spending by developers like Irvine, the Irvine Company and Five Point came through a chain of political action committees targeting Agron, who had over a hundred had over a hundred thousand spent against his re-election campaign, but still finished in first place at the ballot box. I think that's because um, Irvine um, is a highly educated city. Like you've got a lot of degrees in that city. The the it's it's one of the more expensive places to live in Orange County, and um, the the median income is fairly high, I would think. And so you you know these are intelligent people; they're not going to be fooled by these bullshit um, hit campaigns, you know. However, the same chain of committees spent in favor of Khan, spending 50000 on advertising su- su- advertisements supporting her campaign and another 40000 on ads supporting Scott Hansen's city council campaign, who's currently Khan's appointee to the city's transportation commission. I'd be very surprised if Farah can sustain her political career beyond this particular election. I think she was writing on the fact that um, a lot of people were not reading these articles and didn't know exactly what was going on. Um, But over the course of a two-year term, unless she does something to really turn around her reputation, um, Irvine residents and voters are going to catch up with her and want her out. That is my guess. She's got a lot of work to do to repair her image for Irvine or for whatever else she might want to run for. Because she's also hurt herself very much with the organizing bodies that would walk, that would knock on doors and walk for her. Conservative groups also spent heavily against mayoral candidate Brenda Lynn. Oh, wow. A paralegal and one of the founders of the Irvine Watchdog blog. The conservative Atlas committee spent nearly 30000 opposing her candidacy with donations from local hotels and businesses. Local hotels. Okay. Okay, what local hotels? I'd like to know specifically which local hotels because we're talking, they've got some big hotels right up off the 405 
And um, I think uh, Unite Here Local 11 had a big win of unionizing at least one of those hotels, right? The Maybe the Hilton or something. Give me more info on this, please. Tell me what's going on here. I'm, oh, that makes me mad. Lynn ultimately finished in second place, over 5,000 votes ahead of the nearest competition, but over 4,000 votes behind Khan. <sighs> Can the Democrats work together? <laughs> <laughs> Over the past two years, Agron has regularly been the single dissenting voice on the council against the majority, disagreeing with the council on a variety of issues, from the handling of the city's controversial asphalt plant to the newly approved design plan for the Great Park. During the campaign, Traceder was a frequent critic of Khan's taking aim at her work on the OC Power Authority and claiming she spoke with the FBI about Khan participating in a quid pro quo with the CEO of the agency so he could keep his job, a claim Khan has repeatedly denied. And by the way, as I said, I saw this article because it was shared by Dr. Kathleen Traceder. So she definitely co-signs this article at this point, right? <clears throat> They're members of the same party, but they certainly did not run together as a three-person slate, Modian said. It's certainly a 4-1 majority, but one that certainly has some disagreements among each other. Yeah, and I, I, let, let me also point out that um, Tammy has been trying to... Tammy, I know you're on my friends list, Okay. But let's be real for a second. Like, you popped out of nowhere. Um, all, all of the Bernie organizers, w we didn't know who you were. And it's just all of a sudden you wanted to know all of us. You showed up to the, the office opening in Santa Ana and wanted to meet all of us. Um, you got to get an actual paid staffer position, I think. Um for AAPI outreach for the campaign and then went on to run for city council and your time on city council is not at all reflective or representative of our values as Bernie supporters. Um, you have been basically following in Farrakhan's footsteps and working with Mark, uh, Mike Carroll, right? So um, you're working with Republicans. You were against districting. And um, we're just not seeing how, like, how, where did you come from? How did you slip into the campaign? And why are you all of a sudden, you know, on city council and, and working with Republicans? Like, a lot of us have questions. Despite once being seen as a rising star within the local Democratic Party, Khan has fallen out of favor with many party leaders over her decisions in office, with senior leaders in the party questioning whether or not they would endorse her in future elections. Well, I, I mean, at this point, because um, of what happened over the last couple of months, uh, the party leaders have put their own positions in jeopardy because they didn't handle it. They didn't call for a censure vote. They didn't do anything to manage the situation of Khan releasing her private text messages to tank Katie Porter. Unfortunately, Katie survived that smear campaign, but like it could have gone really badly. Uh, while Khan can't run again for mayor in 2024 under term limits. Okay, so she's terming out. She could seek another seat on the city council or run for a higher office. Well, she's definitely, I can tell you straight up, nobody in Orange County is going to support her for a higher office. I would be very surprised, except for that one club that, w that formed with like five ladies in it from Turtle Rock. 
These council members will also be responsible for deciding whether or not to expand the number of seats on the dais to seven, a move many Irvine residents have called for after pointing out they're the largest city in the county with a five-person council. I, that's fair. I would say that's that's fair because they are there. I think Irvine is probably the third largest city in the county, behind maybe Santa Ana and Anaheim. I don't know. I I don't know the population numbers. While the issue was initially discussed in July, the council decided against moving forward at the time because the November election was around the corner. Well, why? But why not? Like, why not go ahead and do it right then when all it is is just adding a couple of slots on the ballot? Oh, my God, with you guys and your excuses. The new council will also be responsible for the early stages of the city's New plans for the Great Park, which includes approval for a new amphitheater and a series of other major projects the city is set to break ground on in the coming year. This is why the developers are all involved. <sighs> all right. This is why the developers are all involved. That's why they're putting so much money into it is because... They have so many expansion plans. That El Toro Marine Base that got converted into the Great Park uh, has been a hotly disputed piece of property in Irvine ever since Bill Clinton decommissioned the base back in the 90s. And um, historically, Southern Orange County has been overdeveloping like crazy. When I moved down here, there were lots of rolling hills and wildlife and deer and tarantulas and coyotes and all kinds of stuff. And we have been encroaching on their space like crazy for the last four decades. Um, so they have this hot, hotly contested piece of land. There was a time in the 90s when um, the folks up in Newport Beach were trying to threaten us with turning it into an international airport because they wanted to shut down John Wayne because um, they were upset uh, about air traffic going over their neighborhoods, right? So instead, we did not f succumb to their their fear campaign of uh, if we don't turn it into an international airport, it will become a federal prison. <laughs> they really tried to scare us with this bullshit. Um, we voted it down in South OC because it was on the ballot for all of us. Okay, It wasn't just Irvine. But um, Newport's been doing that for a long time. And so what they ended up doing is creating a sound ordinance so that if you take a, if you take a flight out of John Wayne Airport, you shoot up like a rocket, right? Like you go up, you go up at a very steep angle, and um, once you get over Newport, they cut the engines, and they coast. <laughs> they cut the engines, and you just soar for a little bit until you're over the ocean, and then they turn the engines back on. It's like the trippiest, freakiest thing ever but that's how they get um that's how have, they've been working around this sound ordinance that newport beach put into place anyway this is the ongoing saga with uh irvine that's what's going on